It doesn't matter how many times you see the Great Pyramid, it's always astounding. Its size, its symmetry, and most impressively, that it's been here for four and a half thousand years. So take a moment and take it in. The tomb of the Pharaoh Cheops, or Khufu, as he's known here. It's completely boggling. You look at it and you think, what is it? Talk to me, do something for God's sake, I don't understand it. It's sort of really weird. British archaeologist John Romer first saw the Great Pyramid 40 years ago. Ever since, like so many others, he's been trying to figure out how it was built. You know, there's an old Arab saying, man fears time, but time fears the pyramids. It's the oldest thing in the world. It just stands there. <laughs> They're impressive today, but imagine the pyramids in ancient times, completely white, shimmering in the desert. Visitors to this land must have just looked and wondered, and they probably ask the same question we ask today. How did they do it? In this land of pyramids, the Great Pyramid is pure perfection. It's not just a huge pile of rocks neatly placed on top of each other. OK, so everyone talks about the great precision of this pyramid, but looking at it, it looks a bit rough, actually. Yeah, it doesn't look too bloody precise, does it? <laughs> but Made well before mathematics was recognised, 2,000 years before Pythagoras came up with his triangle theorem, its perfect angles and joins make this the most precise and most confounding building in the world. You just need to know where to look. So you get this angle, yeah. where this meets this, yeah. and you get the angle of the pyramid. Yes, Is exactly. That right? That's right. Now, this angle has to be so precise because if you're a wee, wee fraction of a degree out where it takes off from the bottom, you're going to be yards out up in the air up there. What is mind-boggling about the Great Pyramid is that it's a really complex building designed with some very simple tools, the naked eye and a piece of string. For much of it, they used a plumb bob, a string with a weight on the end, and they lined it up to the stars to create one of the most accurate buildings of all time. 45 centuries later, it is still more precise than many modern skyscrapers. Obviously, the precision was no accident, but how the ancient builders got it so right without modern equipment, no one's worked out until now. So what are we looking at here? Well, this is, a, this is one of the four survey points that are absolutely key to understanding how this pyramid was made. People have been tripping over these survey marks for centuries, but extraordinarily, John Romer is the first to see their significance, to crack one of the pyramid's startling secrets. That's the third one. That's the third in the line. Yep. This one here is really exciting. He's discovered a one-to-one -one plan of the pyramid mapped out on the Giza Plateau, right next to the Great Pyramid. The plan of the pyramid is the pyramid itself, because if you really want to keep something that accurate, the way to do it is to make your plan at the same size as the finished thing. By measuring out the life-size plan with string, the Egyptians were able to get their ancient calculations, cubits, perfect. Now, this is the clincher. And Whatever anybody says about what I'm telling you here, they say, oh, that's all rubbish, they never did this. But what nobody's ever going to be getting away from is if you measure 40 cubits from that point out there, you get exactly the angle of the pyramid. Not vaguely, not nearly, but 51 degrees, 50 minutes. So what does that tell you? What are we standing on here? We are standing on a sort of design lab. This is where they controlled the architecture of the pyramid. But John's discovery doesn't stop there. He believes he's found yet another plan, one for the inside of the pyramid, similar to the exterior, but slightly offset. The difference between the two grids giving the pyramid its magical angles. Why haven't these two plans been discovered before now? People were looking for a single design. And what I, what I found was there was no single design, there were two. You know, uh, uh, two designs just slightly disjuncted one from the other, rather like a double helix. And, and that, I think, put earlier people off, because what they imagined was there must be a single plan. It's called Mahmoud's Hole. You go in, 
and the stonework is just as well laid in here as it is outside. It's here, inside the Great Pyramid, where the accuracy counts, in its steep, confined corridors. This is the world's most accurate rock-cut tunnel. These tunnels are so narrow because they weren't built for access, but as control lines for the builders. This is, this is where the roots of the pyramid, this is where it all began. We're now entering the biggest space in the pyramid, the Grand Gallery. Look at that, huh? <laughs> The Grand Gallery. And it is grand, isn't it? And the majesty of its polished walls and vaulted ceiling we takes your breath grand. away. When we get to this, which is the masterpiece of the whole bloody pyramid, this is... At the top of the Grand Gallery is the Great Step, a big piece of stone smack bang in the middle of the pyramid. And to the ancient Egyptians, part way through their construction, proof the pyramid was on track. It's... It's the re-foundation of the pyramid, you know, this is like, this is the centre line, we're setting it up again. So the head of the pyramid, the point of the pyramid, was exactly there, that line up, exactly where my point of my finger, 300 feet up there. Creepy, really creepy. <laughs> so this, uh, this proved to the ancient Egyptians that they'd got it right to this point. Well. It didn't, pr they knew, they sort of thought they had, because they're nowhere checking. No, that's so, right. So it, but they get to this point. And they're dead on. We can't find anything wrong with them at all. Duck down. See One more down short, down. cramped journey, and we're in the heart of the pyramid, in King Khufu's burial chamber. So here we are. It's the burial chamber of the king. The climax of the pyramid. And that's where he was buried, over there. They never found him, did they? No. And his name's not on the books. There's nothing. It's completely plain. It's like the other rest. There are no ornate hieroglyphs in this large tomb, but its granite walls are perfect. And these drawings are fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. When King Khufu died, his burial chamber was filled with luxuries from home, gold inlaid furniture and well-crafted jewellery. Four and a half thousand years ago, it was a beautiful and sophisticated time. The only surviving statue of King Khufu, the bloke who built one of the seven wonders of the world, is here at the Cairo Museum and it's tiny. Why is this the only thing that remains of Khufu? It's just chance. All of ancient Egypt, what's left is just chance. You get one king, you get a hundred statues, you get the guy who makes the Great Pyramid, you end up with this. <laughs> you, you like this little statue, obviously. Well, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> 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 Lovely little bloke looking out into eternity. Look at him. Back in the pyramid, this is where the adventure gets even more exciting. You are right up there? It's a bit steep. Yeah, I'm fine. So off, yeah. Up a steep, unstable ladder uh. into a tiny, claustrophobic corridor. You all right, my dear? Yes, yes. There you are. <laughs> oh, I thought tomb raiding was meant to be fun. Yeah, well... We're exploring the small spaces above the king's burial chamber. No one's allowed up here, and this is one of the reasons why. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> what makes this crazy journey worth it is that it's here, in these hot and airless chambers, that you get to see the marks of the pyramid makers. Up there is a little prayer. May the... May the uh, sails of the boats, there's a boat sail, filled with wind. And that's the beginning of the king's name, and it disappears under the block. Meaning? Meaning, you know, like, we have to build this pyramid in a hurry, and we need wind on the river to move these blocks over. So this actually relates to a work gang. Oh, this is this. You are looking at the pyramid being built here. This is the pyramid in action. That's why it's worth a struggle, almost, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I'll leave it. Yeah, thank right. you. Yeah, thank you. So this is the final vault. You almost want to pinch yourself. 
Amongst the 19th and 20th century graffiti of early Egyptologists is the proof the pyramid was built by the king. And there is the name of Khufu in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Just along the sword. Yeah. And everywhere, the red, obsessively straight survey lines from four and a half thousand years ago, showing how each rock fitted exactly into place. Yep, so that one there will line up with that one there. These spaces were added so the roof of the burial chamber didn't collapse under the weight of the top half of the pyramid. Those are the fingerprints of the guys that made the Great Pyramid. So just reach out, <laughs> touch the people who made the Great Pyramid. Almost feels like a Look at that, look at that, look at that. You touch them. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. Every stone means something to me now. And it's very moving, actually. Very moving indeed. Our next step back in time is down to the nearby limestone quarry, where the ancient workers also left their mark. Master craftsmen at work on a masterpiece. So how did they physically get the rock from here to the pyramid? Yeah. They built this enormous rack. The great thing is, that you can get half a dozen men and a lot of water, stick it a stone on mud, and you can slide it like ice. So they were rock haulers from way back. Rock haulers and loving it, apparently, from what I can gather. <laughs> so what about this this idea that these were slaves who, who had to work these quarries, that they weren't willing workers at all? No, this is a work of passion, I think. This is passion you're looking at here. The sheer integrity of this work, the, the purity, the Nobody gets, if, if you're working to hundreds of an inch, it doesn't help with somebody whacking you on the back. At the height of construction, there were 25,000 men building the pyramid, and John's also discovered they made it far more quickly than first thought. On average, these stones each weigh two and a half tonnes. There's just over two million of them, each chiselled to fit the other. A bit like a jigsaw puzzle, if you like. It's precise, intricate work, but there was also a building frenzy going on here. The ancient Egyptians were laying these enormous stones, two of them, every three minutes. Now, they slowed down a little bit as they got towards the top, but overall, they kept up that frantic pace for 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Not a lot, is it? No, not for something so big. It's absolute overkill. They never did it again. It's just this one unique building. Uh, what was magical to them when they finished it, as it would be to you and I if we'd finished it, it's like, we just made that? That's incredible. Wouldn't you love to have seen the Great Pyramid back then, before its limestone casing was ransacked in all its white, gleaming glory? So, tell me what they would see coming up here. Well, you've got to remember, they're going into darkness down there, and they're walking up this really tiny little corridor, up a quite steep hill for a mile and a half. Their Go back four and a half thousand years, worshippers walking up a black rock corridor to pay their respects to the dead king. Now, the magic thing is, and this is showbiz architecture you've got here. <laughs> Today, we're still impressed by the Great Pyramid's imposing size. 146 metres high, 230 metres wide each side. In ancient times, it dwarfed all other buildings. And as those visitors entered the temple at its base, it was as if they were entering another world. Come here, you'd have come to the stone, you'd have thrown the doors open, and it would have physically hit you in the eyes. Whammo! There is this pure white pyramid, this perfect white geometric shape, like nothing anybody had seen in the world before, like a Cadillac parked in the jungle. This is extraordinary. You must have thought they died and gone to heaven, which, actually, is exactly what they were doing. <laughs> How beautiful. What a beautiful picture you've had. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.